All right, hello internet. My name is Jesse, and I'm in a band called Six Foot Machine. And today I thought it would be cool to do a video tutorial on one of my mixing sessions. This is one of the best mixes I've ever come up with in GarageBand. So I'm always learning new things in here and always trying to figure out ways to get better mixes. So I thought this one was pretty good and I thought I'd share it with you all. Uh, this song is called Chocolate Steak by my band Six Foot Machine. We're a three-piece pop punk rock band. Brian, Nate, Jesse. Brian plays drums. I'm Jesse and I play the guitar and do background vocals. So this stuff down here it, with the guitar icon, I just, I'm very, I try to keep it as simple as possible. Left, right, left two, right two, blah, blah, blah. I forget why I called these numbers, but whatever. Chugga chug, all that and such. Vocals, those are Nate. Uh, this is me down here on the background vocals. Okay, anyways, here we go. Here I go. Here's the mix. <laughs> This is Brian at the top. Chugga, chugga, chugga. Anyways, this is my mix. Um I've started using Easy Mix by Tune Track, and um, it's freaking amazing. It's it's GarageBand compatible, uh, so it's you just, you pretty much pull it up like a plugin inside of GarageBand, just as if it were like if you were gonna add some chorus or some EQ to it instead of adding like you know say you're adding chorus up here or EQ down here, you go down further and it automatically comes up down here like an effect you can add which is pretty awesome um, easy mix is pretty much exactly what it sounds like it's software that's designed for people who want a quick mix without having to spend a ton of time trying to get a certain sound that they already know they want but they don't want to spend the two days trying to find that magic sound those sounds are already designed as presets that you just click on um, so like, I use it with um, I use it in tandem with the built-in effects in GarageBand already, and I love GarageBand. The stuff that comes with GarageBand is awesome as is. You can come up with a decent mix with just the built-in effects that are in GarageBand, but you can really trick it out and come up with even better sounds if you get some of these aftermarket plugins like Easy Mix. I got this other one by Waves called um it's the Chris Lord Algae Waves package that comes with all three all five of these things down here 
with a bunch of presets for bass drums and all that. I haven't figured out how to use all that stuff effectively yet, so I haven't played with it. But this song is just using Easy Mix uh, presets and the GarageBand presets. Not not presets, but the you know GarageBand built-in stuff like EQ and stuff. The mi mix I have here I think is pretty decent, and it took me forever to come up with this mix. And I'm, so I finally tried to save everything as presets. Basically what I'm doing here, with I start with the uh, the kick always. Kick, snare, vocals. You want those three things to stand out in the mix without anything else sounding quiet or uh, muffled. You, you want the punchiness and you want the vocal line to shine through. So anyways, with the kick, what I got going on here is just the built-in garage band compressor. I saved it as kick. And I'm not an expert with this stuff. I just follow my ears until I find a sound that I like. So I just basically move these knobs up and down until I get a sound that I like. I've got the um, the threshold. I guess that's the point at which the compressor starts kicking in, you know, applying its its algorithm. I got that set at a t negative 23.5 decibels. The ratio, I've got that a little on the high end, 3 to 1. Um, I'm no expert on compression, but I have the general idea down where, you know, that the higher it is, the higher the ratio, then the more it's going to sound compressed. And GarageBand makes it pretty idiot proof. You know, you just dial it up and it's compressed. The attack, I have that pretty fast. That's how quick it goes into action. Gain, that's pretty much a the output signal. Nothing special there. Just, you know, say you're fiddling with all these presets and you want to see what it sounds like without it but you want it to sound the same volume with the compressor on just so you can compare the sounds without having a volume bias you can change the output so that's why i have it set here so it's about the same volume a little punchier here's the kick completely dropped basically when we do our recordings we play through his electric kit his uh, roland td9 or td4 sorry and then we just run it through the midi output into my mac and then we trigger Easy Drummer samples, also a tune track software. Easy Drummer is freaking amazing. They have professional sounding drums that are becoming the industry standard for samples. At least one of the industry standards, at least. It just sounds so good. But this is the Easy Drummer kick completely dry. This is with the chain that I've created. It's got a, the built-in GarageBand compressor that I already showed you. Some EQ. This is something that took me forever to, to design also. And I, I tricked myself into thinking that I can design the perfect preset, but really you have to just follow your ears every time you make something new. And There are some general guidelines. Like for the kick, I've started doing this as kind of my default. Uh, basically squash the heck out of the middle get rid of all that mud that you don't need and leave the high end to cut through with the so you can hear it in the mix like say you're just playing you know in iTunes and you want to hear it without the headphones on but you want to hear that kick shine through the mix you're not going to hear the low boom, boom, but you will hear that part and that's the part that sounds nice so I like to leave that there and you leave the bottom end also so when you get the headphones on or you're rocking it in the car You've got that, but you really don't need all that middle stuff because it's just in the mix, it comes across as just sounding like mud. So, here is uh, with the compressor. I put the compressor, this compressor first, just because it kind of helped out and it it's kind of like it cushions the blow for everything else coming af after it. it. Just kind of captures some of the, the crap that you don't want to get mixed into these chains over here. So, here is just with the compressor and e the first compressor in EQ. Here is without the EQ. See, it's got all this like this this howling that just doesn't has no place in the mix. If you try to play that with everything else in context, you might not notice it right now. But you know, after you've listened to it a thousand times, you'll be like, "This sounds bad." I guess I guess you can kind of hear it right away. Hear that? Bah, bah. You don't want that. You want it to sound nice and tight. You just want to hear the the punch and the, that little bit of high end to make it cut through the mix. So that if you're on some lo-fi speakers or you're just listening over your 
computer, you'll you'll hear it because if you cut out the high end, then you're gonna you really won't hear the, anything at all, and it'll just sound kind of crappy. The first easy mix thing that I added to the chain on the kick is basically the an unaltered preset, just kick basic two. All you do is you click on it and you're good to go. Bam. I added that on there. Basically when you add that on there, it sounds like without see it's a little little smaller. This adds a lot of great punch and it just sounds great. So anyways, that's my chain for the kick.